It's my first YouTube video. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hi there. So today we're going to be talking about the five mistakes that I first made when I was starting out on daughter photography. So let's get into it. Number one using the zoom a lot underwater it's not something you want to do so i came from a background where i was a photography lover on land and i loved shooting birds and fast moving animals anything nature related really <gasps> I'm hooked. so i was quite used to using very big telephoto lenses and zooming in on the subjects but underwater it's not what you want to do and i found that out the hard way when you're shooting underwater you want to decrease the amount of water and space that's between you and the subject because the more water in between the more distortions color changes and just a lot of quality really if you see something in the distance maybe like a cool turtle you so totally rock you probably don't want to use the zoom because it won't give you a better result than actually getting a little bit closer obviously don't chase any animals underwater we don't do that but yes getting closer to the subject you retain much more detail and much more color as well and also if you're shooting with strobes strobes are an external light source like an external flash on your camera setup if you're using them then if you zoom in you might zoom in past the working range so you might actually not light up your subject by doing that because you're zooming in so far number two using the internal flash in your camera instead of just using ambient light or instead of getting a strobe so i've done that mistake when i was first starting out because things are very expensive when it comes to photography in the first place and if you take it underwater things get even more expensive so when i was starting out i only had my housing and my camera inside the housing and i was using the internal flash underwater because everyone kept saying oh you need to use flash underwater to bring out the colors and yes you do but maybe not that kind of flash i think they're usually talking about external light sources and not the actual inbuilt flash in your camera so when i was using the inbuilt flash it's a very very tiny one and it has the shape of a rectangle so when i was shooting any subject with that i would get really really weird images i would have everything dark and then have one tiny rectangle in the middle somewhere that is lit and sometimes i would miss the subject completely so either just use ambient light which is the light around you and if you're shooting during the day if you're diving and shooting just say a little bit shallower and then you can get amazing results shooting with light or even playing and shooting up towards the light to get some wet so there's a lot of ways you can shoot really good photos without having strobes number three not setting the white balance or not being able to correct it uh, in post editing so when i was shooting photographs on land obviously you still have white balance to counter for but underwater it's such a different story and if you're shooting in manual mode then you really need to adjust the white balance even each meter you go down or up uh, and if you don't adjust you'll just lose quality like that so it's ideal to just adjust as often as possible really every time you make a depth change my life is more difficult than anyone else's on the planet and yes i'm including starving children so don't ask but it is a lot of work and some cameras have a few steps to that but some cameras have inbuilt and auto modes which is very good and very handy especially if you're starting out it saves a lot of time but if you don't have any of that and you don't want to keep on changing every meter you go you can just use the shadow setting on your white balance mode and it helps a little tiny bit and then you can use editing programs such as lightroom and i'm happy to do another video on that because there's a lot of fun things you can do with lightroom and it's a very quick fix usually when it comes to white balance uh, here we have a before which is quite greeny bluey and here we have the after editing which you can see the colors are much better uh, more natural and the skin tones are not blue anymore which is always a plus well i do like green but i don't think i want to be an alien in, in my photos mm -hmm. And remember that red is lost first underwater so you can also use additional filters 
to put on your lenses and a lot of cameras even gopros have just lens covers that you stick on the lens and it's either red or orange depending on the color of the water you're shooting in and it really helps to boost those reds those oranges that you're losing underwater the deeper you go number four not changing my actual shooting settings from land settings so like i was saying i was shooting animals predominantly i had my settings on continuous high which means that if you press the shutter button the camera will take a bunch of photos very quickly and on land it does okay because you can kind of hear the clicking and you can feel the clicking sometimes but underwater <laughs> the hearing is a little bit changed and if you're shooting it through a big underwater housing uh, it's quite hard to feel um, anything really so you don't know how many photos we've taken all at once and on top of that i would also shoot in doubles so i would use raw and jpeg so on land i would be using predominantly raw files because then you can save that quality you can edit it in much nicer ways but underwater i thought well i'm still learning i'll, I'll have a jpeg file that's kind of a little bit edited by the camera and adjusted and I'll have a raw one in case I want to practice editing underwater and that was I guess a good idea but I didn't realize how fast I was going through the SD card and how fast it was filling up so you don't want to be underwater swimming and you've taken photos of I don't know corals which are pretty but nothing overly exciting and then you come across like your dream turtle that you always wanted to see and you swim up to it and you really want to take a photo and you go in you press the button and it says sd card full <laughs> so that's the worst feeling ever <laughs> so really be mindful of what formats how large they are that you're shooting in and also how many copies of them are you doing and do you really need all those copies Probably not, I don't think I've ever used a JPEG, but each to their own and you live and you learn. Now for number five, this is probably the most important one that I'm surprised didn't cause my camera to leak. Uh, I still don't know how that happened, I think I was just very very lucky. <laughs> Number five is not changing your O-rings or not even cleaning your O-rings, like at all, like ever. Whew. Danger, danger, danger. When you first get into photography, on land is not something you worry about, you don't even know that exists. And then you go underwater and you have your brand new housing and it looks really cool and complicated and you don't know what button is what. And you don't realize that there's normally two main O-rings, so we have a black one and a white one in my one and for the seal to be created and for the camera housing not to flood and kill your camera you need to make sure there's no hair in it there's no dust and that the o-ring itself is not torn up it doesn't have any scratches on it and that is well greased up but not too greased up with silicone grease when i started off i just looked at the o-ring and i thought okay it looks fine uh there's no scratches yeah i'll just leave it so I did. And for like a thousand dives, I was diving with not having changed it or inspected it or cleaned it. It's a miracle it didn't flood. And when I finally realized that my camera could have flooded on so many occasions, I started reading a little bit more about it and I did the photography specialty, which kind of goes a little bit into details about how to actually maintain your equipment. Uh, which will be very useful for the beginning but hey ho that kind of gave me more confidence in changing the o-rings and actually inspecting it and putting the grease on and i wasn't as scared of removing the o-ring anymore so i could do it on a more regular basis before each dive and i think that really saved my camera and my money so that's my top five things that I didn't do very well when I first got into photography underwater. And hopefully this will help you a little bit to know what you need to look out for. And obviously it will be different for everyone. Everyone comes from different backgrounds and has different experience levels. Um, so that's just my experience, but I hope you learned something new. And yeah, happy shooting. Don't flood your cameras. Check those out rings and I'll see you next time. Uh, I'm Mihalina and I work in Bali Ahmed at Prana Dive.
and I moved here only about a month ago so everything is still quite new to me but along the lines I'll hope to um, bring some more photos and tips to you um, and yeah so I'll see you soon and oh what do the youtubers say um, don't forget to like and subscribe and it'll be somewhere here Turk will help me because I don't know how to do that <laughs> alrighty see you later have a lovely day bye bye